Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and fellow citizens of Papua New Guinea. Today, the 2nd of October 2024, is a landmark moment in the history of our nation's digital journey. A moment that is the culmination of years of planning, dedication and a vision that began in 2020. Today, I want to take you on a journey, a journey that reflects our commitment to transforming Papua New Guinea into a digitally driven, inclusive and prosperous society. In late 2019, when I first assumed the role of secretary for the Department of ICT, we had one task ahead of us, to chart a vision for a digitally empowered Papua New Guinea. It wasn't just about technology, it was about improving operational efficiencies across government, improving transparency and accountability, increasing government revenue, fostering an innovation ecosystem, but most importantly, transforming the experience of services for our citizens. The vision was ambitious, but it was clear. Digital transformation that makes government more effective, improves service delivery, and fosters inclusive social and economic development because of a smart, networked, and well-informed society. This vision became our North Star. It set in motion the groundwork for transformation we are here to celebrate. To achieve this vision, we knew we had to work backwards. We asked ourselves, what would it take to create an ecosystem whereby 2027, Papua New Guinea would be ready for e-voting? What steps were required to ensure that by 2026, our government had achieved high cyber security, resilience, and digital maturity? And what would be necessary to launch single window portals offering a wide range of digital services by 2024 to 2025? The answer was simple, yet challenging. We needed structural reforms, strategic investments, and the establishment of a robust national digital infrastructure. This is where we began the hard work. And in mid-2020, we started by launching the department's ICT corporate plan, which highlighted the need for sectoral policies, a whole of government technology approach, and phased implementation of key components such as national cybersecurity, government cloud infrastructure, and digital public infrastructure. One of the first key steps was to formulate the digital transformation policy, capturing our vision and breaking it down into six policy subcomponents: digital infrastructure, digital government, cybersecurity, digital skills, innovation, and financial inclusion. From 2021 to 2024, our policy team worked tirelessly to develop the enabling policies, including the National Cybersecurity Policy of 2021, the Government Cloud Policy 2023, the Data Governance and Protection Policy 2024, the Draft ICT Clusterization Policy and the Landmark Digital Government Plan 2023 to 2027 that would make this vision a reality. But sector policies alone were not enough. We knew that for digital transformation to succeed, it had to be embedded in the fabric of government macro policies. That's why in 2022, we worked to align the digital government plan with the medium term development plan 2023 to 2027. Digital infrastructure, cybersecurity, and digital government have since been enshrined as medium-term strategic priorities. As the journey continued, we understood that for this transformation to be successful, we needed a governance and accountability framework. In that same year of 2022, we established 
the Public Service ICT Steering Committee. We designated digital transformation offices across all public bodies, and we set up a project management office to facilitate procurement and resourcing. At the same time, and in another landmark milestone, the Marapeg government introduced the Digital Government Act 2022, a legal framework that would anchor all our policy work and ensure that we had a solid foundation for implementation. Parallel to all these efforts, and from 2021 to 2024, we undertook structural reforms to transition from the Office of Information to the Department of ICT, with new functions that covered cybersecurity, digitalization, government cloud services, interoperability, and the development of all the e-government portals. In 2023, we moved from policy to technology, adopting a whole of government technology stack that focused on fast, seamless, and scalable solutions. But one thing we immediately realized and recognized was that the Department of ICT could not handle this workload alone. That's when we sought out to set up the Kumul Technology Development Corporation, KTDC. Through strategic partnership between Kumul Consolidated Holdings and the Department of ICT. KTDC will be set to drive the digitalization of government services, continuously identifying emerging technologies and rolling out our digital ID and payment building blocks as digital public infrastructure for both government and private sector to use. And today, we stand on the precipice of a new era. After years of work, we are launching the Service Pass, the Service Portal, and the Service Wallet, the cornerstones of our digital nation. The Service Pass will become the digital ID for every citizen of Papua New Guinea. The Service Portal will bring government services closer to our people, transforming user experience and making long lines and inefficient processes a thing of the past. And the Service Wallet will allow every citizen to take control of their personal records, certificates, and permits, empowering them to seamlessly interact with services such as opening a bank account, enrolling in a school, and starting a business. With this launch, we introduce Papua New Guinea as a digital nation. We are confident that in the next 12 months, Service Pass will reach over 6 million citizens. We are also confident that the Service Portal will revolutionize how services are accessed and delivered. And we are confident that the Service Wallet will enable our people to manage their digital identities and personal certificates with ease and security. This is not just a launch, this is the future of Papua New Guinea. As we take this bold step forward, I invite you all to join us in this journey as we continue to build a smarter, more connected and more inclusive nation. Thank you.